You may be seated, my brethren. May God bless you. Glory to God. I want to remind all of you that this next Sunday in the evening, we are going to be celebrating here in church the Holy Supper, and we are going to do the same that we did last month when I was uh, uh, traveling to send a link to all the brethren of our virtual church and to put them in the screen so at the same time we can participate all together. You don't need for us to send you a link because you are going to be here on Sunday. But to all the ones from group number one, group two and three, I have been announcing it today. If minutes before starting the service, uh, we are going to send you the link. So at the moment of the Holy Supper, we can be all together participating. And afterwards, when the Holy Supper ends, you return again to connect to the YouTube channel, the ones that are at home and the ones that are also in different parts in the world, for them to keep seeing the service, OK? To tell you, brethren, that we are in the last stage uh, of the preparation of this Congress that we are going to do this second year in a row. And this year, it has been something tremendous. Uh, uh, more amount, more people has been, has, uh, wanted to come. People keep uh, writing and calling for them to be able to come, but we don't have any more space. We have uh, rented the hotels in the town, the big hotel where we're going to be celebrating the meetings. The dinner uh, room is going to be used as a second dinner place, and we have had to rent a huge uh, tent that's going to be put on Tuesday or Wednesday to be able to do the service in the outside. So as I said the other day, thanks God, this is going to be the last year in this hotel because we don't fit in there. And next year, we're going to have to look for another place, a great, a bigger place. Thanks to Sarai that she has had a tremendous work and she has organized everything very well. And from the ones that are here tonight, how many are going to go to the Congress next week? Okay, glory to God. How good. I don't know, it's going to be cold, warm. Uh, take everything because uh, last year when it was there, it was very cold in the evening. But then afterwards, the Lord gave us a weather that was extraordinary, and we were in short sleeve, which helped us a lot to go into the pool uh, to celebrate the baptism. So just in case, have a jacket with you. And if you don't need it, then better, right? Well, brethren, this weekend, we send Anderson and Edison to Brussels, where we have a church that is working for a while, but we still don't have a pastor there to be placed there. So once in a while, some of us go to attend that place. And this weekend was Anderson sharing the word there with the brethren and also his brother Edison. And they are going to come for a second. Afterwards, he's going to share the word and he's going to tell us how it went. That time there in Brussels, in Belgium, thanks God, it was not as, was not as cold as another times we have gone. Well, it was cold, but in comparison that when we went, it was very, very, very cold. So they are going to come, come in front. I think they, has brought, they have brought some pictures for you to meet the brethren there, and they will going to get ready for the work. God bless you, brethren. Amen, brethren. To give th you thanks for the prayers, it has been a very blessed trip where we have known our brethren there in Brussels, in Belgium. I don't know if you have the video prepared. So while the video is going, is uh, being shown, we will sh uh, tell you about the experience we had there. It was of great blessing there is. On Saturday, we had two meetings. Uh, on the morning, it went different persons from the one in the evening. And the next day, we had another meeting that another, another brethren went also different uh, not all of them went the same day. It's right, it's true that there is a family that is in that work. Working is a, a family with a lot of members. And we met them there. One of the things that to me particularly called my attention is the youth. There is a lot of youth and a lot of kids in that uh, meeting, in that congregation. 
right? And for me, it was of such a blessing to see so many youth and children. When you see a youth, you see their future. You're seeing a ministry. You're seeing futures, different men and women that the Lord are preparing. And there is a place where the kids receive their Sunday school. They usually uh, agree to see which um, couple goes down to teach the Sunday school to the kids. There we were. That was on Sunday, if I'm not wrong sharing also the message as the pastor says it was very cold it was five celsius but for us for them it was very good they said it's very good when alberto went it was very cold but when the pastor went i believe that they told me that it was even colder too cold even minus uh, zero celsius lots lots uh, very cold the experience has been beautiful they receive us in an extraordinary way I didn't feel uh, shy. On the contrary, I was one more together with them. They were very happy of the visits. There is all the group that we were there, there on Sunday, right? And me particularly, God gave me the opportunity of taking a message there and share with them. They were very happy. Mostly, uh, there are a lot of brethren of us that uh, I saw them for a lot, long time in the virtual church, and now I met them personally, and I spoke with them uh, through the internet, but now it was a beautiful experience to know them personally. My brother came with me. Well, uh, to add, that when you go to those places and you find believers, family in the faith, you feel uh, very comfortable, like if you knew them for a long time, for years. Uh, uh, all, of, all the members uh, were uh, very, very nice with us. They help us, uh, they were paying attention to us, diligent. We felt very good, uh, very take, good taken care of. Uh, it was very cold, five degrees Celsius for us, it was very cold. And truly, they are very hungry of the word of the Lord. They are very hungry. The Lord spoke through my brother, a word that was uh, beautiful, very good and they want to, to come here to know the church, and also they want us to go and to know them, right? God willing, they have planned uh, to come, some of them in August. They are very happy to come here and know the congregation. They send you many, many greetings, many, many blessings. They are praying a lot for each one of us, for this church, and also remember them in your prayers when you are uh, before the Lord. Amen? And that's it. Glory to God. That's it, brethren. So let's keep praying. Amen? For that group of brethren that are there in that place, and they have incredible testimonies. We were listening to them, part of them, and truly we see the hand of God in the life of each one of our brethren. So many thanks for your prayers. Very well, brethren, let's go to the word of the Lord. I'd invite you to wherever you are, you put your head down and ask the Lord with your own words and say, Lord, I want you to speak to me. Help me. You know my life, my heart. God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity that you give to us once more of being before your presence. We pray and we ask you for you to speak to our lives today. Speak to us, Lord. Help us to be paying attention to the message that you have prepared for us today, that we can put it in practice, that we can keep it and treasure it in the deepest part of our being. Thank you for this wonderful time that you allow us to enjoy before your presence. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Very well, brethren, I want to share with you, I think it's a message that is very beautiful and special. I believe that the Bible, one of the things that teaches us is that we have to have it. We have to have it. Without it, it's impossible to please God. Do you know what I'm going to speak to you about? Very well, faith, about the faith, the faith in the Lord. When we go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, 
right? It speaks about the faith. I think it's something that we have to read every uh, a certain amount of time continually because it's like an energy that the Lord gives to us, a strength through that text of that word that strengthens us every area of our lives of everything that the Lord did with each one of these servants of him. Through what? Through the faith. But if we go to Hebrew chapter 1, verse 6, and, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. It does not say, well, it could be. No, no. It says, without faith, forget it. It's impossible to please him. I want to ask you a question. Do you want to please God? Yes, right? It says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. It's telling you, if you go to the Lord, you have to believe, you have to have faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is is necessary. If we come close to him, we have to believe that he exists, of his power, of his sovereignty. We have to believe in it. And that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. So if we have faith, we please the Lord. If we come close to him, we know that it's the Lord that is almighty, but also if we do all these things, the Lord says that he's a rewarder of those who seek me. We are blessed if we seek him in faith. So brethren, we cannot go little in our faith because the faith takes us to get great blessings for our lives because the word of the Lord says so. So we have to have faith to increase our faith. This is why we understand why Jesus uh, didn't like when he saw that his disciples didn't believe because without faith it's impossible to please the Lord. And uh, he said, uh, unbelievers, you don't believe till when I'm going to have to stand you. Men of little faith, why did you doubt? A person that doubts is a person that reflects that does not have faith, doubts because has not faith. And Jesus reproved and told his disciples because of that conduct because they were men of little faith because it's necessary to have faith when we come close to the Lord when we we believe in him in his promises when we expect in the time of the Lord it's necessary to have faith constantly and then is where the blessings are going to come and the rewards of all of those who seek him and believe in him we also see that the Lord uses different persons that they were Gentiles to exalt their faith. Great is your faith, right? I have not found a faith so big like yours. The Lord said uh, uh, to the centurion and the woman to the Canaanian, but he used the faith of them to exalt it before all the ones that were following him also as a teaching to his disciples. You have been beside me. You are seeing and observing all the signs and all that I'm doing now, even you doubt. Nevertheless, then, look at the faith they have when they come close to me. And the Lord uh, uh, praised them and exalted that kind of faith when he found them. It found it in those persons before many people. And there we, here we found in Hebrew that it speaks a lot about faith. And chapter 11 is about this. And if we go to verse 1, it says, what is the faith? What is the faith? Here it said, verse 1, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and conviction of things not seen. So here we have as a fact that those persons that say to believe, I have to see. Have you ever listened to this expression? A lot. If I don't see, I won't believe. A glory to God that the Lord is not manifested in that way because one of the persons that had it very complicated, complicated could be the blind persons. Can you imagine if to believe you have to see how good the blind persons believe if they don't have any sight? How would they do the persons that do not see that they are blind? This is why it's not based in what you see. The Lord taught the, touched the heart of the blind, of the deaf, of the one that cannot speak of all of them because it's not based in what they see. It's 
something that the Lord puts in our heart, that conviction that comes through the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And I remember once when I was sharing in the youth house, one of the persons that believed that came to the church, to this place, it was a blind young. From all the ones that saw, uh, the Lord touched the one that could not see, because many can't see, but they are blind. They see naturally, but they cannot see the wonders, the love of God they don't see. But we, that we have believed that we truly have realized of the existence of God, and we know that He's real, He's real. We see the wonders of the Lord since we get up till we go back to bed at night. Everything speaks about the Lord. If we raise our eyes towards the heaven, we see His greatness, the creation of the Lord, even the animals, the trees, all of that has been created by whom? By God. The air that we breathe, the sun, the moon, all those things have been created and designed by the Lord. And we see the wonders of the Lord. And people say, oh, show me the existence of God. Show me. I don't have to show you the existence of God. You show me that God knows does not exist because I'm so convinced of his existence. I don't have to show it to you. You show it to me that he does not exist because if this pulpit is here, I am not going to show you that it's here. You show me that it's not here because I know that the pulpit is here. That's the way my faith is towards the Lord. People has to show me that God does not exist. But me? The fact for you to see me standing up, I'm showing you that God exists. The fact that I can speak, the fact that I can preach, the fact that I can have family, the fact that I can have food into my mouth, that's the existence and the mercy and the goodness and the uh, faithfulness of God. And everything speaks about our God. This is why we don't have to say, oh, let's see how I show it to you. We don't have to show it, but they have. They are the ones that have to show us. Why do you think that God does not exist? And then they're going to start to say things from one side to the other, but there is the word for us to testify and say, no, you're wrong, because see what the word of God says. And it seems that science wants to go against God, but the Bible also speaks about the science, shows a lot of things that are still being discovered, and the word had already been said so for a while, a long time ago. My God is sovereign and real, and he exists. And you and me, we have belief in that faith. We have that faith. We believe in the Lord. And the people say, why do you go? Why do you do this? Because the Lord is with me. But why are you keep having that hope that they have told you cannot be done because my God has the last word? Because I'm not uh, based on uh, what man says, but my foundation is God. And uh, for men that do not have the encounter with the Lord, it escapes their understanding. But we that we have belief and know the Lord, we know his wonders. And I want to uh, read some portions of this chapter. It's very long. I'm not going to have time, but I have chosen some. And in verse 4, for example, it says, by faith, see that always says, by faith, by faith, all these persons that we are going to be reading about, the rich and so things, and it was something that impulsed them. What was it? The faith. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous. God testifying about his gifts and through faith, through his that he still speaks. What did this um, man give? Uh, a better sacrifice. He knew what he had to give to the Lord, but not just not anything. He gave the best the better sacrifice to the Lord, but his brother did not give what was better. He went as a routine. He knew what he had to do, but gave whatever he wanted. But nevertheless, his brother marked the difference, and the Lord says here that it was the better sacrifice. I want to make you a question when we do something for our God, because the scripture says that everything you do, everything you say, everything you think, everything we can do, we have to do it not as for man, but if he says in his word that everything we can do, we have to do it for God, then we have to do it with in a, a better way because it's for our God. Me, in my work, I take effort to do things with excellency because I don't do it for men. I do it for God. I try to be a good father because I do it for God, a good husband because I do it for God, and everything I can do, I do it for God. 
And then our lives are going to be different when we learn to do all things for God. Because you are going to uh, uh, do your best and do it with excellency and do it from your heart. And it's not going to be an obligation, but on the contrary, you are going to take the opportunity to do it for God. Everything is going to be an opportunity to serve God, everything. And then that marks the difference. And then there will be joy in our hearts because we know that there are opportunities that are given to us to serve the Lord. And here, one of the things that by faith please the Lord is, what was it? That Abel offered to God a better sacrifice. We see in Enoch, by faith Enoch, verse 5, by faith Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death. And he was not found because God took him up, for he obtained the witness that before his being taken up, he was pleasing to God. He gave testimony of pleasing God. And how did he do this? Because he walked with God. And what is to walk with God? To do the will of God. To know what God wants me to do and to put it in practice. And that is that was pleasant before the Lord. It pleased, uh, pleased God. And we know that everything that pleases God is uh, the will of God. So if we want to be like an oak that pleases God, because he lived a life according to the will of God, then we also have to have a life according to the will of God. And we have to please him. The question is, what is that? What, is, what pleases God? Do you know it? Do you know what is the purpose of God for your life? Do you know what we have to do? And all of that is here in his word. I don't know how. Here it is. All decisions that you have to take in your life are establishing the word of God and the Lord is our guide and the Lord directs us and the Lord takes us in a correct way. What for? To please him, to please God. And he says that by faith, the Lord took him. He did not see death because it was a man that pleased God, that walked with God, obeyed God in everything, in all his ways. Are we obedient to the Lord? A person that obeys the Lord is a person that shows, that has faith, that knows what God is demanding from him and is, God is going to bless his life and it's going to be for his own good. Even though we don't understand it or what we are living or going through, sometimes we think that we are going through the hardest thing in our life. But what is the promise of the Lord? All things help us for good for those that love God. And if you have faith in those promise and word, you are going to rejoice in what you are going through and in what you are living because you have the support of God in all the midst of that. And God is with us at every moment. The Lord accompany us wherever we are. So let's learn to live different. We learn to do certain things different in our lives. By faith, another man also did tremendous things. By faith, Noah, do you know who Noah was? Amen. Glory to God. Being warned by God about things not yet seen. Here you take this text as saying when the Lord is saying something is because it still was not raining at that moment. He didn't know what rain was. The Lord was said to him something was going to happen, but he didn't know that because at that moment a vapor came out uh, from under the earth that uh, made it to give fruit. But at that moment, the Lord is saying something to him that is going to happen that he still had not seen, nor him, nor all the inhabitants of that place. Things not yet seen. In reverence, this word is beautiful. In reverence, with fear, with respect, prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world. And, uh, sorry, I write so much in the Bible that uh, by which he condemned the world and became an unheir of the righteousness which is according to faith. We read this text and it seems that, oh, that's it. But to build that ark took him approximately 100 years. 
hundred years where he was preparing something that the Lord demanded from him, but not only working, but he says that while he was preparing, he was speaking and announcing what was going to happen. And all of that impulsed him. What impulsed him? The faith in the Lord, in what, in the faith in the word that God gave him. I want to ask you in these times: Are we preparing? Are we preparing our lives? Are we preparing our families? Are we preparing our household for what's going to happen? Because the word tells us and advises us the, of things that are going to come in the last days. That is still we still have not seen, but we by faith believe that they are going to happen. Do you believe it? By faith, we know that those things that are written are established are going to happen and are going to happen. And it says that this man by faith prepared that uh, thing that would brought salvation for him and for his household. Are we preparing? Are we preparing the hearts, the atmosphere, our household, our surroundings for what's going to happen and what's going to come? by faith, or are we so submerged in what's happening in this world and involved in the things of the world and we are not conscious in what's going to happen? Because thanks to this man that he was working for so many years and people maybe were saying, you are crazy, what's going to come? What? What's that? How come? Because they still have not had that experience. That craziness that many times persons come to our life and say, what's going to happen? That the Antichrist is going to come? What's that? That the, the, the faith of men is going to grow cold, that the evilness is going to go increase, it's going to increase, that the bad is going to be good and the good bad, that's going to come the, the seal of what, of the beast? What's that? You are crazy. So many things that they're going to say is craziness, but you and me know that are going to happen and they're going to go happen. And the times are close. And we, by faith, we have to prepare our hearts and prepare also our household and our family and all the surroundings around us and where God takes us, we have to go and be that voice of announcing the things that are going to happen, as Noah did, because of obedience. And thanks to that obedience of Noah, thanks to that faith, he could save not only his life, but also his spouse and his children and the spouses of his sons. Look at the family he saved, because he obeyed, because they were obedient to God. And the obedience took him by faith. And if you and me believe really what the word of God says, then there has to be a work. You have it has to be seen. It has to be seen that action of obedience. And the Bible speaks about that. James speaks about work. And I want you to accompany me to cha to James chapter two. See what it says. James chapter two. I know many of you have read this portion from verse 14. What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but has no works? He's speaking about the faith and the works. Do you have faith? Then also has to be works. You have to be seen. He's asking something. What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but he has not works? Can that faith save him? Sometimes there are persons that take another text, and here is a contradiction because it says, can that faith save him? But Ephesians says that by faith we are saved. Well, let's go to Ephesians. Let's see what Ephesians says. Then we will keep reading James. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and ahead. You have it? Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith through faith and then it says and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not as a result of works but then uh, James says that is by works and here it says not that by faith brethren it goes together by hand by hand faith and works go by hand together the one that that does works is because of faith and the one that has faith does works it goes together not separated it goes Let's see it further ahead. 
blood as a result of work, so that no one may boast. So people, some people think that they do, their salvation is because of what they do, but their heart is far from God, do not fear God, but they do the works before men, even to boast, or even to say that because of the works they are going to do good things. And this is what is said outside. Oh, this person is so good, he earned heaven. Because I've done so many good things? No. No, do not go in that mistake. It's not for words. What for? So no one may boast. For the glory is for our God. And then we move on. We are in verse 9. Not as a result of words, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Here is telling you, we have been created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so we could we would walk in them. You realize? Yes, it's true. By faith, by faith, we are safe. By the grace of the Lord. It's gift of God. The faith took us to that salvation, but the faith also takes us to do works. To show in the faith that we have believed in the Lord. So it goes by, hand by hand. And here James is speaking about the work, about what we have to put in practice, the faith. You say you have faith, then show it through the works. If somebody said, I have faith, I believe in the Lord, he changed my life, he entered into my heart, he made me a new creature, then brother, then we will have to see works. Not to simply say from lips to the words the outside, but it has to be manifested in those works, in the faith that you have believed. Verse 15, if a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, James, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warm and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? Even so, faith, if it has no work, works is dead being by itself but some may well say you have faith and i have words show me your faith without the words and i will show you my faith by my works the works simply will show the faith that you have that faith that noah showed no i did not have to say have faith in god no 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 the hundred years showed his faith through what? Through his work, through his, his obedience. And he says that the fruits, the fruits of a believer, his works show who he really is. The love to the neighbor, to love one and the other, to be paying attention, diligent in each one of the needs, all of that is shown in the character way of being of a person. See what he was and see what he is now. See what he spoke and now what he says now. And everything starts to change and be transformed. Why? Because of the faith, transform lives and takes uh, the result of words to give the glory to God. And that's a wonderful word that we see reflected in the life of Noah. That word that was there constantly, and many say, do you know the time that I have been working? Do you know the time that I have been taking effort in this and the other, and people have signed on me and criticized me, and I keep persevering and advancing? I say to you, do not quit, because Noah was 100 years doing something that he didn't even know. He didn't know. And they could be saying, you are crazy. How come you're going to build a huge boat to save whom? Through what? Because of a flood? And what is that? But what is craziness for man is a great blessing for us that we are children of God. And we see the support of God. And when that door closed, when it was the time fulfilled, and when the time is fulfilled of everything that we have been spoken and announcing and preaching and testifying and saying one way or the other, when that time is fulfilled, many will realize that we were an instrument of God, that we were that voice, that double voice, that God was speaking to many souls and hearts for them to have that salvation that reached us also. Right? And they will realize and oh those when that close door was closed and they realized and uh, rain started to fall down i started to say what is this what is this what is this coming from what is this was this what was this what noah was saying for a hundred years saying won't it be that that noah was working and we were calling him crazy and we were saying him that he was losing his time can it be that and it started that 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 it started did not stop for 40 days and night without ceasing everything was flooded 
So many persons that were shouting for the door to be open, for to them to be able to enter, but it was too late. It was too late. Do not get tired of doing what God has called you to do. Do not quit, even though people don't value what you're doing, even though man signal you, even though the many times they go against you or you don't feel like having a strength, you know something, God rewards those who seek him. Do not grow tired. Do not grow tired of seeking him and doing his will. The time will come that it's going to be fulfilled. The time will come and the moment and the promises of God will come. And he's faithful and righteous to renew constantly our strength. When sometimes we feel that we cannot. I want to speak to you about another person that is known as the father of the faith. We cannot speak about the faith without speaking about this person. So we have to speak about him because he's called the father of the faith. Since God called him, he was a man that believed and trusted in God. Since he said to him, leave your parent, parents, your land, your comfortable, uh, leave that place and go wherever I'm going to go. He abandoned. He left. And he obeyed. He left and he departure without knowing where he was going. The Lord said, go. And he was obedient and he went. But there is a part that I want to share with you and calls my attention particularly. If you want to read at home, I encourage you for you to read the whole 11 chapter. Read at home. I don't. I won't read it here because of time, but I encourage you for you to read at home. From verse 11, it speaks about Abraham, but I'm going to read to you from verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, listen to this. He was tested. And there is a text in the Bible that is necessary that our faith be tested. That is found as gold, even though uh, gold and gold is passed by fire. Also, our faith is going to be tested by fire for it to be found in praise and glory for when our the returning of our Lord Jesus Christ and the faith to be strengthened has to be tested. Do you want your faith to grow? Then it's necessary the test. And the Lord says here that he sent him a test. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son. It was he to whom it was said, In Isaac your descendants shall be called. Here is the promise. In Isaac your descendants shall be called. So great that even the stars of the heaven, because you cannot count them, also your descendants will be. Look at that promise that the Lord is giving here to Abraham through his son, Isaac. But afterwards, it says in verse 19, he considered, now it calls my attention because Abraham was uh, thinking. He was thinking, thinking that in a promise. God has given me a promise, but has taken me to do something, to do a sacrifice. And then he considered that God is able to raise people even from the dead, from which he also received him back as a type. Who is he speaking about? His son Isaac. He was thinking that if he sacrificed his son in that altar where the Lord told him to take his son, he was in the way saying, my God told me that I would have descendants and that descendants would be through my son Isaac. But he's asking me a sacrifice for me to sacrifice my son. I'm going to be obedient because I know that it's not going to stay there because there is a word and a promise. And there is a word and a promise for you also and for me that regardless of what's happening or what may come and you say, my God, Lord, by this does not go into your plan or will, do not stay with the beginning. Hold on to his word because Abraham hold on to the word and to the promise of God and he says something is going to happen. Something has to happen. A miracle, tremendous miracle is going to happen in this place. Why? Because God gave me a word. And the word of God is alive and active and is mighty. And he knew that even though he sacrificed his son, God was going to able to bring him back from the dead. That's what he thought. He was with this uh, willingness to arrive. It did not make him go back, but that faith of that God was going to do something took him to the obedience. And there's nothing more beautiful, brethren, than to believe the Lord. 
than to trust in the Lord because regardless of what may happen, come whatever come, we will keep being standing up because we have believed in a God that is sovereign, in a God that has given a word for his children, for his people, for his church. And that is what we have to hold on to and grasp regardless of what our eyes may see. And he continued, was obedient, and he was thinking, when I sacrifice my son, God is mighty and will raise him from the dead. He was wrong. Yes? Because he did not kill him. And sometimes we are like this, Lord, I know that you are going to do this and the other. I know you are going to do the other. And the faith does take us to think something else. But remember that our thoughts are not his thoughts. They are different. And here what, uh, uh, Abraham was showing the Lord that he could do whatever for love to the Lord, that did not put Uh, the blessing of God before the obedience. And there is people that put first the blessings of God for your life before obeying God. Remember who gave it to you. Remember who gave you that family, that son, that business, that job, that studies. Remember all the things that the Lord has opened doors and has not given it to you for you just to stop gathering or reading the Bible or praying. No, but to come closer to him as it was the son of Abraham. The Lord says, this is your son, the only one that descendants will come over him. And I have given it to you miraculously, miraculously because your daughter, your wife was sterile. And look at your age. It, it, in a moment that was impossible for man. But what is impossible for man is possible for God. But remember, I have given it to you. And this is why he tested his, his faith was tested, sacrifice your son. And the Lord wants to test many areas of our life. And one of the ones wants to test, you know which one it is, the ones you hold on most. That What's that that you hold on so much that you say, Lord, you cannot touch this? Yes? Untouchable for whom? For whom is, un is untouchable? Are you going to say, God, what he can touch or not? That, that you hold on most, be careful because maybe it's what the Lord is going to touch and he wants to show you that he's your God, he's your God and my God and we only depend on him. And he, in every one of these areas, is not because he's bad. And you say, Lord, why? Why this area? Why this? You know how much cause pain, how much I suffer seeing these areas touching my life. And the Lord says, because I love you and I want to put you a firm, a firm faith in me. And the people see that I am with you. And it's necessary even though it's painful, even though we suffer, even though so many tears come out of our eyes when we see that the Lord touched that area of our life. But the Lord also is glorified and is shown that he is with us, as he did with Abraham. Abraham, you thought that I was going to allow it, but I love you so much that I am not going to make you go through that that for you to put that knife in your son. And in the last moment, he stopped him. And he says that when he looked towards the other side, the Lord has provided of an animal for a sacrifice. And there is where is known a God that is a provider. That same Lord that is going to provide for each one of our needs. Do you believe it? You don't have to live with anxiety. You don't have to go before the Lord. Eh, go ahead of him. No. Trust in the Lord. Put your way on, hi on his hands and he will work in his time. But have faith that he's the provider of each one of our needs. And I want you to go quickly to Moses. I don't want to stop speaking about these persons. There are a lot of them. Read chapter 11, please, because it's a chapter that is extraordinary, that speaks about the faith. But in Moses, we find also a teaching about faith. In verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, chosen rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to their reward. This is precious. 
You know, Moses, we see a type of Christ, a type of Christ that also we see it in Philippians chapter 2, being you that uh, uh, feeling that was in Christ, that he mm, denied to himself. Also, Moses uh, gave up all of his riches, uh, expecting the reward of God. We don't have to hold on or rest to anyone nor nothing. If we have to get rid of something to keep persevering, uh, do it. But do not hold on to things that are going to take you to sin and be separated from God because you hold on to things that do not uh, are not worth it. Only let's hold on to the faith in the Lord. And then he will reward, as his word says, of those ones who seek him, of those ones that... Uh, takes away those things that uh, stops them for coming close to the Lord. Moses did not hold on to any of those things. On the contrary, he was insulted. He was shouted, despised. He didn't. Didn't he have tremendous fights with the father? Many, many. With the people? Uh, 40 years uh, uh, go, uh, uh, having to cope with the people that did not believe. And all the time, the people being an unbeliever, regardless of all the things that the Lord did, and who did the Lord use Moses at all moment. This is why he's known as a humble man. Humble man. Because he knew how to intercede for the people. Lord, do not allow that. If something has to do, do it to me, but not them. Look at the level that Moses got, a type of Christ. All these men and women that we can read here in this chapter 11 of Hebrews, all of them are here in this world, are written, you know why? Because of the faith. Each one of them, everything starts by faith, by faith, by faith. By faith they reach, by faith they saw, by faith they did, by faith they, the Lord worked, by faith, by faith, by faith. Brethren, by faith. You are going to reach blessings of God. For your faith, the Lord is going to touch hearts. By your faith, you are going to see doors open. By your faith, you are going to see blessings of the Lord. But by your faith, for those that believe, all things are possible. Do not doubt. Only believe. And you will see the glory of God. But you have to have faith. And the faith is going to take you to reach and see wonderful things. Yes, of course. I'm going to tell you some verses. Um, Verse 33 to 36 tells you all the precious things that these men and women did by faith, tremendous things. But if you read afterwards, 36 to 38, it says also the bad things that he went through because of faith. It means that you are also going to experience beautiful things. You are going to experience beautiful things. You are going to see miracles because of faith, but also you are going to go through moments and circumstances that you won't want. But because of that faith, you are going to go through that because it says so. There is a great big list of good things that also bad things that they went through because the Lord allowed that and many of them did not see that promise. They were men and women of faith that they were till the end but they could not see the promises. To whom? The Son of God, the, the Messiah, the Anointed One to to what everything goes uh, directed and signals towards him, you and me persevere, that even though our eyes do not see him, we know of his existence, that he dwells with us and is with us in us, and we believe in his word and promises, that word that says, I will be with you every day till the end of the world. We know that we are not alone, that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is with us and accompany us, and if he is with us, who, who against us? That is the faith that we have. And that's the faith that made us move ahead and persevere. And I want to end with this text that is in Hebrews also. The worship team can go up. Hebrews uh, 10, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. But my righteous one shall live by faith. By faith we live, who? You and me. That is what maintains us standing up, what maintains us moving ahead. By, but my righteous one shall live by faith, by faith. But, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. We are not called to shrink back, brethren. We are not called to run away from the faith. But the scripture says that in the last days, many will go away from the faith. But you and me, we are not called to that. Amen? Then verse 
39. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the preserving of the soul, to advance and to move ahead, to reach the goal, to reach salvation, because the one that perseveres till the end, that one will be safe, and the faith will take us, and the faith will guide us, and the faith will impulse us, that faith in the Lord, that faith that is genuine, in which we always have to keep moving ahead and, and feeding that faith. And one of the things that does that the faith grows is the chest. Even though many times we don't go want to go through chess, it's necessary, it's necessary the chess for our lives. I want you to close your eyes and you know to tell to the Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. These men that are in chapter 11 of Hebrews, they are there written because of their faith. All Before speaking about each one of them, it says, by their faith, reach this, did this, by faith, their eyes saw, by faith, he managed to prepare all the things that are announced here was by faith, the faith. Help us, Lord. That faith that brought salvation to our hearts that has been by grace, not by works, is a gift from you, Lord. You choose us and touch our hearts, Lord. Help us, Lord, to maintain the faith. That faith for it to increase every day of our lives, through the day to day, through the things that we may experience, Lord, that that faith grow. As the disciples came close to the teacher and said, Lord, increase our faith. Also, we present our lives before you and we pray, Lord, increase our faith. Remove all unbelief from our hearts. Help us to live by faith. As your word says, the righteous one will live by faith. Help us to live, Lord, by faith. Believing in your word, believing in your promises, Lord. Believing, Lord, that you have the last word. Believing that you are going to be glorified in the midst of that circumstance. Believing that you are going to do great things in our lives, my God. Help us, holy God. Help us. One of the things, Lord, that you thought was that you saw so much unbelief. Even, Lord, your word says that in the same place where Jesus was born in Nazareth, There were few miracles that you did because they did not want to believe. That our unbelief, Lord, do not stop for you to be glorified in our lives. That our unbelief do not stop for you to be glorified in our loved ones and family members. That our unbelief do not stop for you to be glorified in the healing, in the sustain, that our unbelief do not stop to reach the souls of preaching and announcing the gospel wherever we are. That our unbelief, Lord, do not stop for you one way or the other, Lord. Do a precious work in our life. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Increase our faith, Father. We ask you, help us, Lord. Thank you, Father, because if today we can't read of these men, it's because of their faith. Simply, they are here written because of all the things that they reach because of their faith. And I give you thanks, Lord, because many of the ones that are here are standing up because of their faith, because they have believed, because they have trusted, because regardless of that test of fire, that fire that came to their lives, you have maintained in them standing up because they believe in you. Raise up a church that believe in you, Lord, that live by faith, Lord, that we learn to make decisions believing that you support us at every moment, Lord. That it be a church put a, a faith 
put in your will, Lord, in ours, that we don't put the faith where we don't want you, where you don't want us to put it, or we believe in things that you don't want us to be believing in those things, but for it to be a healthy faith, only and exclusively established by what your word says. Thank you, my God, for your word. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this message, Lord, that you have brought to our lives, holy God. We want to please you, Lord. And one of the things, God, that we can do to please you is to have faith, because without faith, it's impossible to please you, Lord. Help us, Lord. Everything that we may do, say your thing, my God, for it to be pleasant to you. We ask you everything in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.